When several people from all over the United States of America arrive on the same lonely road, cut off by a fallen tree and covered in crows or ravens, they soon learn that each night, creatures disguised as humans come out and hunt them. We have seen what these creatures can do, strong enough to overpower a strong, fit adult male and rend every fiber of muscle and meat from his body in a matter of seconds. Creatures that have the intelligence to enjoy torturing and inflicting total terror on the prey they hunt. Maybe I can come in. There you go! Creatures that are only held back by talisman their prey possess when inside a house or a structure, and only then can still come in if invited and let in. There seem to be elements of magic to this horror story. At first glance, with a need to be invited into homes and with a strong appetite for human blood, it would seem as though these creatures are vampires. There is probably a lot more than meets the eye. What are these creatures? Let's point out some of the stuff we know about the creatures thus far. They only come out at night. They only seem to hunt at night. They seem to exist only in this closed off realm from which humans, animals, and objects are unable to escape. They are carnivorous. They have the ability to shapeshift. They are intelligent and know how to trick human beings. They can speak whatever language it is that humans need to hear in order to understand them. They never seem to run, just walk. They can also climb very well. As long as you're inside of a structure, such as a tree, car, house, shed, or any enclosed space, having a talisman will work 100% of the time. And sure, they cannot get in unless you physically let them in by opening a door or a window. If you do not have a talisman, no matter how strong the door is on your house or structure, they will get in. They have extreme physical strength. They enjoy torturing. They don't feel pain and cannot be killed by conventional methods or weapons, no matter the caliber. And lastly, they tend to travel in groups. It is possible that since this realm in the show is a closed system, meaning the road used to enter the town cannot be used to escape, nor can escape happen by any means that are quite obvious, it is possible that the creatures themselves are trapped here. Another possibility is that this could have been a realm from someplace completely different, probably from another universe. It's also possible that the creatures themselves are from another universe. One possibility as well as to the creatures' origins is an Irish folklore. While this doesn't seem like the most probable, at the moment it seems to fit, since at the moment I'm not aware of any other stories that fit the bill with the creature's features and their behaviors other than vampires. And vampires seem to have a slightly different MO. The most vile and most dreaded of a place called the Realm of Fairy was the Slua, creatures that were more feared than even death itself. According to the lore, compared to these creatures, death was easy. These creatures were called the Slua. The Slua was something entirely different. Even death can't help but bow to the Slua supremacy in an otherworldly competition for the souls of the living. The word Slua means to host in Irish. The Slua is a group made up of the most evil and depraved beings known to man. They were referred to as Fae Gone Amok, otherwise known as ill-begotten form of fairy folk with no reason no loyalty, and no mercy. Slua also means horde or crowd. Once Christianity was introduced to Ireland, the idea of the Slua was altered to mean a pack of unforgiven, unrepentant, or dead sinners. And as a result of this, the Slua were assumed and believed to be once human. These creatures, now damned and believed to have been humans themselves, choose to prey on the souls of the living, more specifically those of humans. <laughs> In other more descriptive tellings of the folklore, they were restless spirits of evil people who were not welcome to neither heaven nor hell, and not even in the other world. Monsters that have been rejected by the Celtic deities and by the earth itself. 
You may wonder, understandably, why the creatures in the From series are Slua, as the described can apply to a wide variety of otherworldly entities. However, several aspects of Irish folklore seem to correspond with the events shown in the program. It is said that these creatures would huddle together and hide in very dark places while they wait for night to fall. To untrained eyes, these beings would appear as a vast and ominous flock of large ravens, undulating into massive dancing shadows as they descend for an attack. The Slua were also said to fly in from the west as these ominous birds and try to enter the house of a dying person in an effort to steal their soul away. In the Western Isles of Scotland, the Slua, also known as the Fairy Host, was believed to be made up of the spirits of the dead, flying through the air, and the Feast of the Dead at Halloween was likewise the festival of the fairies. When we saw the ravens in the show, or crows, on the fallen tree in the road, forcing the people toward the town of the damned, the main characters remarked on how odd the birds were behaving, even for ravens. It is possible that those ravens seen in the daytime were the Slua. Even though there is the inconsistency of the creatures needing to sleep and hide away in the dark in the daytime. So either some, when in another form, can appear on the outskirts of the town to lead people into it, or the ravens are simply just used as an ominous symbol. It's possible there's more to them, since they behave quite strangely. Just like the lore, the monsters from the series also hide in the daytime, or sleep in the daytime, and come out to hunt at night, with the exception being that they appear to be in human form, probably so they can easily deceive the humans or unnerve them. However, on an individual level, the Slua are gaunt to the point where it seems that they are literally skin over bones. They possess beak-like mouths and wonky teeth that are obscured by long, wiry, dark hair that falls from their heads at random. When they are not in flight, their disfigured humanoid bodies are covered in weathered, leathery wings. In the show, we see their true depiction only briefly when they are not trying to actively deceive the humans. Instead of a beak, long knife-like teeth line their mouths they use with the greatest efficiency to rip and tear meat from the bone. It is quite telling that these creatures are a form of fairy, or fae, or fair folk. Fairies were described as nature spirits, or cunning tricksters who preyed on naive humans. Creatures who did not understand morality, and could be quite violent beings. Fae mythology and folk tales that have been told over many centuries by the welcoming and communal heat of campfires in many different cultures commonly identified the Fae as scary shadows in the night, and human-like beings with magical powers. They were ancient supernatural creatures that usually manifested during pivotal points in people's lives and lived in liminal places otherwise known as areas where two worlds connected, like a forest, like in the show. Which could be applied to many of the characters in the show, if not all of them, for when they were getting there, they were in a pivotal moment of their life. One where they were either experiencing despair, hopelessness, brokenness, and deep, seemingly incurable sadness. For the Chinese family, it was the father's dementia. For Boyd the Sheriff, it was his wife's PTSD from her time in the military. For Sarah, the unstable woman who was hearing voices telling her to kill the boy, it was her having a mental illness, probably schizophrenia. For the priest, it was him wanting to give up on life, ready to end it all, due to the guilt of not having been able to help the little boy who came to him for assistance, which unfortunately led to his demise. The priest then having heard a voice telling him to drive which caused him to end up in this town which became the death of him. The Slua was simply a form of fairy, the way a tiger is a form of feline, and the most powerful of them all. In folklore, at least some versions, it is said that the Slua can hunt you down and locate you with the greatest accuracy if you utter the word Slua. As far as we know in the show, the monsters don't go after people for merely mentioning them. However, the monsters do seem efficient at finding people. Then there's the matter of parts of the lore that mention the Slua seeking out dying souls or people who are close to death in order to steal away their souls. There are claims that the Slua can sense a hopeless heart, one so sad, dejected, and depressed that a person feels utterly broken. A demeanor like this smells like a king's feast to a slua, and that will lure them to steal the souls of the dejected. 
the night monsters in the show appear to enjoy pursuing and teasing their prey as a technique of evoking terror. They take pleasure in torturing their prey not only to heighten the terror felt by the victim, but also to instill fear in the remaining people. Even though the monsters are not exactly like the Slua, it is possible that they are still a representation of the creatures from that folklore. It is not at all uncommon for movies and shows to take liberties in changing little bits of the folklore in order for it to be better received for the current audience, time period, or for the sake of dramatization and even affordability. Regardless of what these monsters are, the people found themselves trapped in some sort of pocket dimension, an extraterrestrial experiment, or something similar to the effects of the show Lost, from which this seems to be inspired. And the unfortunate captives are in some place between the worlds of the living and the dead. In which case, utmost care would be needed to ensure their souls are not devoured and taken away by these demonic fairy folk. Thanks so much for watching. This has been Ultiori, you ask, we answer.